Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome to our very special podcast interview with Kiri Mohan and Kiri, I just realized I forgot to ask how you say your last name. Is that did you I get it right? right? Absolutely Woo! right. <laughs> I love your first name, Kiri. It's just awesome. I said that right, didn't I? Oh, absolutely. Kiri? Yep. Said okay, it right. Cool. Kiri Mohan. <laughs> Kiri has been working as an assistant since she was 15 years old when she landed a part-time summer job, and it was the beginning of the end. As Kiri has stayed in the assistant profession in some form for her entire career. Now, you might, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you might think, oh, that sounds like she's really old. She's not. She's very young and beautiful. So if you're not looking on YouTube and you want to go see this darling woman, uh, you can go check us out on YouTube. Um, Kiri has been focusing on C level executives as an executive assistant in the corporate world, as well as supporting C-levels in her role as a virtual assistant. Kiri co-founded the Association of Virtual Assistants as the COO. And uh, Kiri uh, interviewed me on her podcast. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that she and I clicked. We almost couldn't. I don't even remember how long we talked. I know we could talk for hours. I think it was like an hour 20 or something. Ridiculous. (laughs) She has the same philosophies as I do. Um, She has this, uh, she is a brilliant woman. You're going to learn a lot from her today. So please, if, if, however you take notes, you're going to want to get your notepads out because Kiri's going to share with you some really great tips and tools. So Kiri, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. And I hope I live up to that wonderful intro because that is intimidating. Oh, I know you will. (laughs) I've already talked to you long enough in the past that I absolutely know you will. So I'd love to start by just having you talk a little bit more about how you became a virtual assistant. What was your journey there? Yeah, so as it said on my bio, I started when I was 15 as an assistant. And honestly, I didn't even want the job. My dad had gotten it for me and they had asked for my older sister, who's five years older, so significantly older. And they were like, does she need a summer job? My dad said, you really don't want her. She's not organized. How about my younger daughter? And yeah, so my dad was like, hey, I got you the summer job. And I was like, no, I want to work in the grocery store and buy groceries with my friends. And he was like, what? no, you can make so much more money in this office job. What are you talking about? And he like basically forced me into it. And I was like, oh, so I What a good dad though, really in hindsight, right? Yeah, right. Like totally. He was spot on. And my sister ended up doing like English in college and getting her PhD in that. And was like a writer and a teacher. So she would not have fit into that role at all. Um, But so I started off really just making copies and transcribing. Like I had this whole big, packet of papers of like testimonials for this company. And I had to put it into the computer because they're all handwritten. So like that was what I started as. And it was summer. And then they said, we really like you. We'd like you to come back in the fall in your school year, basically after school. So I came back like two hours, three days a week. So six hours. And I was still making more than well, my you friends. You were making some good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making more money than my friends. So I, I started being like, wow, I really like making money. So from there, I um, went uh, went to college and they kept calling me back when it was like winter break and summer. And wow. I was an office assistant in college as well. But my goal was to actually become a broadcast meteorologist. So I went to school mm. for meteorology. I did calculus. I did physics. And then right Woo. after college, I yeah, know I, told, I, said, I said you were a smart lady. There we go. I, to be honest, I pretty much failed physics and aced calculus. And for everyone out there who says, well, physics is the same as calculus. It's just turning the word problems into equations. No, it's not. It's really hard, actually. <laughs> so, And you had to take two. You had to take physics one, physics two. You had to take calculus one, two, three differential equations to be able to be eligible for a grad school in meteorology because I thought I was oh going to go gosh. that route. Yes. Wow. So I graduated. 
I ended up getting an EA role in a company and I supported seven executives. They were like one of those super strapped companies, seven executives. And at the same That's time, a lot of executives it is. to juggle. It is. Oh my gosh. It prepared me though for my VA business. But yeah, no joke. You were already working with seven different people and yeah. having to juggle that. That's exactly yeah. what VAs do. And they were they weren't um C level at that point. I think I was supporting like VPs and directors, um, but it was still they they could be quite demanding. And then oh, yeah. um at the same time, I was sending out uh videos of me doing the meteorology because I'd gotten internships in for two summers and doing the actual, you know, like standing there being like, we have a low, low front coming through, et cetera. Um, and then I started getting job offers and I just, if the job offers were like, you have to get up, you have to move to the middle of nowhere. Cause you know, they start you off in the middle of nowhere within a week. And these middle of nowhere places had no jobs for my husband. It was all retail pretty much around there. And he works mm-hmm. in sales and corporate sales and it would start off at like 18,000 a year. And my, one of my first job offers was 18,000 a year. And it was only weekend meteorology. I had to be on the field for the rest of the week and it was 60 hours. And I was like, and this is like, it was started turning into a pattern. It was like, you can come out to this place in Texas and West Virginia in the middle of nowhere. And the middle of nowhere didn't bother me. It was like the pay, the 60 hours, right. nothing for my the husband. Opportunities. Right. And I just started being like, do I really want to do this? And so I said, okay, well, I could go to grad school and do the meteorology. And then I'd get like a cushy little job in some remote building, just forecasting weather in some town, you know? And I just was like, you know, I really like being an EA. So let's just go that route and see what happens. And so I applied for another job after that. And I got um, to be supporting a C-level suite. So it was like, I think it was an EVP, a COO and a CEO. And while I was there, they were traveling so much that I began to realize that I didn't need to be in the office. And I was like, why am I here? Like there'd be days where it's just like quiet in the sea level section. And I started getting bored. And so I was like, I could do this from home. Let me look up work from home, executive assistant roles and up pop virtual assistants. Like somehow that came up on the Google search engine and I started looking into it. I was like, oh my God, this is perfect for me. This looks great. This is what I could do. I could just work from home. How do I apply? And then I was like, oh, this is, you have to like make your own schedule and contracts and you have to find your own clients and set your own rates. I was like, absolutely not. That is not for me. Just (laughs) shut it down. And then two months later, I was bored again. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. And I, I want to talk about that because that mentality I think is, is really important because it's almost like the self-compassion no pressure. Let's just see what happens. And I understand some people aren't in that position and they need to, they need this to work, but having the ability to be like, I have a full-time job. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to that. Let's just see what happens. I have tried to start two or three other businesses and I feel like they've all failed because I've been like, I need to do this. I need to get it to work. I need it. And then I feel guilty when I don't work on it. And then it collapses, but having the ability to be like, let's just see what happens was the best thing I could do for myself. And I really just took the time and I started working at nights and on weekends. And before you knew it, I started my business and within nine months, I was able to quit and go full-time with my VA business. To be fair. So in nine months, okay, that's what I was going to ask you. You didn't replace, totally replace your income in nine months, but you were making enough that you were able to quit because you could see that you could Make that. And, I could okay, be, cool. and you know, what's crazy. I really believe the universe has this stuff. Like within two weeks of me giving my notice, I got the highest paying client and I was then 10,000 over what I was making when I was working. Kiri, I see that happen constantly. People will be like, I have to have this much before I can quit. I have to have this big number mm-hmm. before I can mm-hmm. quit. And I'm like, you can't get to that big number until you quit. Yes. You can't do it until you quit. And then they do. And immediately. I have like within two weeks, like you're talking about the first 30 days, typically they'll, they'll get to where or above where they want. Thank it's just you for something sharing about that. that like putting it out to the universe or mentally like opening yourself up. It's just weird. That's right. And that has happened. That's exactly throughout what my, it is. Yeah. It's and it's happened throughout my putting out. VA career where it's like, I'll, I'll lose a high paying client and I'm like devastated. I'm like, how am I going to replace them? And within now it's probably within six months because I'm a little busier. Like I will replace that income with no problem that happened during COVID. And it's just like the weirdest thing. And I know I have to just trust it and trust that process. So that is my story yeah, of how I became a VA. 
Oh, I love it. Okay. So I want to go back to one other thing you said, the great story. Thank you for stopping and sharing that feeling. Um, well, first I want to just mention, I truly believe in the saying when one door uh, closes, another opens, or when one door closes, a window opens or whatever that saying is, because that's the energy you're putting out there. That's the energy you get back. If you're putting out uh, you know, I'm limited. I can't do more. Uh, I'm scared. Like you were talking about, that's what's going to come back to you. That limitation, that lack, Mm -hmm. but when you put out there, Hey, I'm going for it. I'm going for my dreams. That's what you get back. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you you've experienced. I love it. So what I want to explore a little bit further is when you, I love that you Googled, you know, uh, executive assistant work at home and virtual assistant came up. And then when you read that this is your own business that you have to run like a business, cause mm-hmm. it is a real business. And then you're like, Oh no, I'm not going to do that. What made you think at first? Oh no, I'm not going to do that. What fears came up or, you know, limitations. I, came up? I think it was, um, Hey, I love the idea of the steady paycheck, getting the same thing every, for me, it was two weeks. It was a two week schedule, but just getting that, knowing that security was there. I mean, I don't think I've had the same amount every month since I've started my VA business. Um, but that was the first fear. The second fear was I had no idea how to run a business. I didn't, I didn't go to a business school or I didn't do entrepreneurship. My dad actually has his own business, but he never shared that kind of stuff. I mean, sure, if we asked, he probably would have, but we never did. He never talked about, here's how you set up your own business. Here's how you hire people or here's how you go out on your own. Like, so I was like, I have no idea how to do this. Like, how do you even start a business? I remember that. And like, and the small business association was not very helpful. I was going in circles. Um, Back then there was a place called virtualassistantforums.com. I don't know if it's still around. I, I don't I know remember that. it. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's still around, but I remember it. Yeah. I would dig into that to try to figure mm-hmm. it out, but it was still confusing. Mm-hmm. Like sole proprietor versus LLC. What do you start with? Like people were saying, start with the LLC. And then some people say, no, you don't need to start with the sole proprietor. Like, what is even an LLC or sole proprietor? <laughs> like where, what is right. that? Right. And like, then it's different for every town. And I was like, what are they talking about? So that, that was like the panic because when I realized you had to start a business, it was like, I just don't know how to do that. So nope, done, shut the door, not doing it. But then I kept thinking about it because it was like freedom and flexibility and creating your own schedule. And I loved that idea and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And at the same time, I read Sheryl Sandberg's lean in and Mm. I realized I was like, if I want everything in my life, I have to do it myself. I have to create it myself because as a woman, if I want to have children, cause I wasn't thinking about children then it was like, I want them, but we weren't actively trying to have any. So it was like, if I want to have children and like, I'm going to, my whole salary is going to go to the daycare where I'm from. So my standard of living is very high as we were talking about. So my whole salary the daycare is extremely high everywhere. There is no cheap daycare. Yeah. So it's like, either I would have to give up my job or my husband would have to give up his job. And one of us would have to stay home with the kid. And I was like, why can't I have everything? And I kept coming back to that I was re- as I was reading Lean In because she was talking about women just need to have so many more options available to them because so many quit when they have children because of that. And I was just like, I want to have it all. How can I have it all? And then I kept thinking about that virtual assistant thing and like creating your own schedule and, you know, being able to make a good amount of money. And so my only real goal then was like, if I can somehow get to the point where I can have kids at home and make a part-time salary. So not even what I was making, make a part-time. So I'm bringing in something and I'm having children at home, then that will be enough for me. <laughs> it wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I, went, I, went, I, went away. I just was like, no, 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 no. I want to keep making more money. How much can I make? Let's keep pushing myself, even with a kid at home. So when I did have my child, I did give up some clients. I made a little bit less, but I kept pushing myself to like, how can I make this work where I have this flexible schedule and I still end up making a lot of money. Okay. So I want to explore that in a minute, but let's um, go back to, all right. So you make the decision. Okay. I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to figure this out. Um, What gave you the courage to do that? I don't see, I don't even know if it was courage. It was really was this like, well, let's just see what happens. And I, okay, and I guess cool. the courage came from the fact that I had a full-time job. So I was like, you know, okay. if I, if this fails entirely, yes. 
I have right. this job. I'm still okay. I'm still right, cool. okay. So I think and by the way, really how, what I know you work with VAs that, that you've worked with VAs also. So in your opinion, I know we haven't scientifically done this, but um, from your experience, what percentage of people do that? What percentage of people say, all right, I'm going to keep my job and start this on the side and see how it goes? I've met very few VAs who successfully end up with a VA business after having a full-time job. Um, I've coached some and I wouldn't say I have that much success <laughs> because a lot of them are <laughs> like, it's too much work. And I'm like, it is. And I try, and I, and I always start off with that. I'm like, this is, you're going to have to hustle and this freedom and flexibility or whatever you want to call it is not going to be there in the beginning, especially right. because you're working eight hours a day already. That's right. Um, and I was just talking to someone to speak about this and how I said, you know, I scheduled emails to go out. So it looked like I was working throughout the day for my clients. Um, so it would be like, I would get up early in the morning at like 6am and I would go through stuff. I would schedule for that day. I would go on my lunch break. I would go out to my car. I'd be on my phone and I would be scheduling emails again. So then it would look like over the next four hours, emails were going through. Cause as an EAVA, they usually want you in their inbox every day. This is not something I can come home to at the end of the day and be like, Oh, well now I'll work on my, the social media graphics. Now I'll work on the newsletter. That wasn't what I was looking for. So, I mean, I was working morning, lunch break, and then many hours in the evening after dinner and weekends. So, so I, I totally hear you on that. And what, uh, the phrase that I like to use that I've heard from others, and I don't remember who said it, but, um, if you're willing to do what uh, others are not willing to do, you're going to be able to accomplish what others have not accomplished. Mm, I agree with that. Yeah. And you don't have to do it the rest of your life. You only have to do it mm -hmm. for a limited period of time. But if you really want your dream life, you really want this lifestyle of flexibility and freedom, you have to be willing to either take, have the courage to take the leap out of the job or work your butt off for how long? Nine months, you said you did. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I was working all the time. And even when I didn't have clients, I was marketing all the time, scheduling social media stuff, yes. blogging, yeah. putting stuff out on LinkedIn yeah. um, until I started getting clients. And then I started bit by bit, like slowing down yeah. the marketing a little bit and spending that time on mm -hmm. client work instead. But yeah, you have to be and, willing to work. Hard. I will tell you, you know, I have seen lots and thousands of people do this. Right. So I say about 50% start out keeping that job and working part-time. And those who become really successful are those who g quickly go to either part-time work if they can, working from home at that job if they can. Um, and then they can make that transition easier. Kind of like you were talking about, you were still doing stuff during the day. Um, if it takes, and by the way, if uh, I've also seen nine months as pretty consistent of, okay, now oh, I can, after nine months, I can quit that job and feel, still feel, still pay my bills mm -hmm. <laughs> because we have a lot of, um, in my program, we have quite a few single moms. They have to pay their bills. Yeah. Right? They don't oh, yeah. have, they don't, they have no other income. So, um, nine months is, it's so interesting that you said nine months. One other thing that I see as a problem um, is a mindset thing that a lot of people have. Kiri, you obviously did not have this, um, but I've seen a lot of people struggle with this and I coach them. Thankfully, primarily I'm able to coach them through this, but when you have a plan B, <laughs> when you have a fallback plan, you often don't really put your all into your business, right? Well, I did. Yeah. I don't know why. But like, I, I guess it was like the you're, you're exceptional. Me. You're exceptional. Now, are there, I was, you know, I didn't even have a job. I quit my job. I remember. Yeah. Because I was so sick of it. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't have a plan B at all. But if you have a plan B and this can be anything, like I've seen people start their VA business and then get scared and go get a job. Have yes. You, I've seen that seen too. That? Yeah. I've seen that too. Yes. Yeah. And that's the plan B that's going to mess you up right? You've got to really believe in this and go for it. Like you did, Carrie, you really went for it. You did those mm -hmm. things that most people aren't willing to do. And you, and you knew it was going to pay off. So congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. And why am I saying this? Cause it, you know, we, people might be going, well, I'm never going to be able to do it then. No, that's not true. 
you just have to decide this is what you want. Mm -hmm. And I think I did. I think that was like somehow reading lean in was like at that moment was so pivotal for me um, Mm -hmm. because I was just like this. If I want to make this happen, if I want to be able to spend time with my kids, not be throwing money at daycare or have to quit my job and still have a career, the only option for me. So maybe that's it. Like there, maybe in that psychological sense, there was not a plan B because I was like the only option to have everything I want in this life is to start my own business. Yeah. And, oh, I love that so much. And Kiri, what else I heard you say was that you didn't have a role model. You didn't, which I didn't either. And most you mean like people, another VA I could have talked to something or like just, somebody in your life. Oh. Like, right. Like, yeah. I, you know, yeah. Well, I, like another dad, woman. Like, I, with my dad, it's like, I saw what a successful business looked like and I've seen mm-hmm. him go through ups and downs. So there was like that little bit of aspect there and people are like, oh, it's in the jeans. I don't know if it was, I, I didn't know anyone else. And I'm, st- I was so young in my career and I still am pretty young in my career that it was like, no one was doing that. None of my friends, we had all just graduated college. I mean, this was within three years of graduating college. So no one was thinking like, oh, I'll just go out on my own and do this. You know, that, that wasn't happening. Right. I mean, I can tell you, I had no role models at all. I didn't even know anyone, at least you knew your dad. I didn't even know anyone who had their own business. And in fact, in my era, you know, I could be your mother. I might even be able to be your grandmother. Um, In my era, nobody left a good corporate job. I mean, literally when I quit my job, everybody was like, have you lost your mind? Right. And I was like, no, I've decided to have a life I love rather than wait until I retire to have a life I love. I know. I think about that a lot. Like my friends who are just so tied down to their job. And like, I used to try to be more encouraging and be like, you should start your own thing. Like really, it's awesome. And I'm like, some people just don't want to, and they don't have it in them. And they like, but they'd rather just complain and look at me and be like, you're so lucky. And it's like, well, (laughs) you could have this, but you choose not to. That's right. That's right. And you're right. It isn't for everyone. It absolutely is not for everyone. Um, Another thing I want to explore is when you said, I felt really secure in that corporate job. And -hmm. I think that's what traps a lot of people uh, because they feel like it's secure. And I'd like for you to explore a little bit for us um, what security feels like now to you. Would you still think, yeah, that corporate job is where security would be? not where I am now. Good question. And if not, why? I do want to throw out, like when I gave my two week notice, my CEO took me into his office the next day and offered me 25,000 more than what I was making to stay. He did not want me to go. And my husband told me to take it. And I was like, because at that point I was making far less than what it is. So it was, it, there was that security thing. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like what, what am I doing? Yeah. I uh, love you know that you shared that, that he offered you that because guess what? The other thing, didn't you think, uh, why wasn't I already making that much more if you're offering that? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I didn't think of that. I was just like, stay strong, stay strong. No, <laughs> let me think about it. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and my husband was like, what? Cause then I would have been making more than him at that point in our careers. And he was just like, what are you doing? Good for no. you. Good for you for saying, you know what? No, I'm choosing me. I want to, this is what I want to do. This is my life. This is, yeah. it's going to fulfill me. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. What's interesting about that security question is like, actually now I think my job, well, my job, my business is more secure. Cause I'm like, I would never lose all my clients at once. Like I, you could lose a job. You could get fight. Like look at COVID like assistants were being let go left, right. And it was a terrifying time to be an assistant. I lost clients during COVID. I had clients asking for discounts during COVID and like less money, but I never lost my full salary and I never lost every single client. And that was the closest. I think I've come in my business. I've now been doing this seven years where I've been like, "Uh oh, have I made a bad choice? Like, am I going to lose everyone? Oh no. (laughs) And I didn't. It all worked out fine. Um, But that was definitely that moment where I was like, maybe this isn't as secure as I thought, but it was. And I've come through it and I've been like, there is security in having multiple different clients. And even now I'm I'm at this weird, I was talking to my husband two days ago. I was like, my business is really uncertain right now. He was like, what? And I was like, I have a client in a crisis. 
who might not return next year. And I've been working with this guy for seven years since I started. I have another client who is phasing out. He sold his business. So he's phasing out right now. And by the end of this year, I might not have him anymore. I said, I've got another client where they want to like maybe hire someone full-time in their office and not have a VA anymore. And I said, this is a, like the most I've ever been like uncertain, but I don't feel insecure. And there's a difference. And it's why, like, I know, why don't you feel insecure? Because I know that this free time, either I can focus on my new business even more, which I think could make me more money and more security, or I know this will open me up to possibly taking on clients that are more in line with what I want in my schedule and my lifestyle. And it's like, I have enough experience now that this doesn't bother me like it would have in the beginning. Like uncertainty is not the same as insecurity. And I think I've learned that now. That's right. Oh yeah. You have to embrace uncertainty as an entrepreneur. The yes. more you embrace uncertainty, the, the stronger you get, your, the stronger your muscle gets to manage uncertainty, the bigger you're going to grow. I agree. But I, and yeah. I, I understand, I feel for the VAs out there who do not like uncertainty because surprisingly, I don't really either. This is the only area of my life and it's a huge area. It's my salary, but like, it's the only area of my life where I'm actually really creative, where I am not inside the box, where I think outside the box and where I do things that are just uncertain. And if you know me outside of this life, it's like, everything is by a schedule. I am not spontaneous. I am very like by the books and people always are, my husband at least is always like, come on, let's do something different today. And I'm like, no, I cannot watch a movie tonight. Cause then I'll be in bed at 1130 and God forbid, no way. <laughs> and by the way, I'm exactly the same way. And if you had asked me before I started my business, uh, how, do you like uncertainty? I'd been like, hell no. Right. No. I, uh, Carrie, I'm like you, I literally have the next year planned almost right. to the minute. And, you know, I'm like, yes, I have to be fluid and flexible, but I need that planned out. I yes. love a plan. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What I love that you said, um, because this is exactly what I've experienced and all of the VAs that I've trained and coached have experienced is once you really learn how to find, get and keep clients and and do the work, you never lose all of your clients at once. Um, and you know how to get more. Mm -hmm. And when you know how to get clients, you will never be without clients mm -hmm. unless you choose to be without clients. And to me, there is no greater certainty. There is no greater security than having that skill and having that ability. I think What's interesting is now my business runs completely off of referrals. So I, I like having the security and like knowing like, okay, if I had to go out there again and hustle and do my social media and up my game and get clients, I could, but I love that right now it's all referrals, but like knowing that I've done it before and knowing that going into a new business is like, I can do this. I can get clients from scratch when they, no one knows who I am. Exactly. So yeah, once you have that under your belt, it's just like, I got this. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but, um, and, you know, I very much experienced what you're talking about because when I started my VA business, it was 2001 and I was a real estate VA. I mm -hmm. did marketing for real estate agents and I, I grew my business yeah, to where I had 70 clients. I had a team of five subcontractors. And then in 2008, we all know what happened. The mm -hmm. real estate bubble burst. And I lost 75% of my clients in 30 days. I lost 75% of my income in 30 days. And I panicked. That, uh, that insecurity It's very humbling. Like token. It's humbling, <laughs> isn't it? Because it happened like with COVID, yeah. something similar happened to me. And I was so confident. Yes. But so like, I've been in my business over five years. I have a good success rate, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, <gasps> wow. I know. So I know. humbling. Like, how can I bring this yeah. back up to what it was? Yeah. Yeah. But one, but just like you, once I looked at it and said, oh, I did this before I can do it again. I just need a new target market. Mm -hmm. And within literally within 30 days, I had a new target market and I had a full plate of clients again, and I was earning what I wanted to earn again. I think I, it's so important. That is a sense of security. And I think that psychological knowing you've done that before and you can do it again. I think a lot of new VAs, yes. they haven't experienced that. So they don't understand it 
right? They yeah. don't understand. That seems like insecurity to them. But what if I lose my clients? Okay. Then you just yeah. go out and do what you did before. You know, right. it's going to be rare. Yeah, that you in fact, every single one. I don't know if you've coached anybody like this, but I've had uh, VAs come in who are, have all the clients they can handle, but they're charging $15 an hour and working more. And actually, by the time you figure out, that, you know, they're not even counting all their hours and stuff like that. Mm. They're probably actually charging $5 an hour, not earning as much as they need to live on. And I tell them, raise their rates. And they're like, what if I lose all my clients? And I'm like, if you lose those clients at 15 an hour, be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not going to pay you what you're worth, you can get people that do. And I've had them who have lost multiple clients by doing that. But just like we were talking, that opens the door and in came the $40 an hour clients mm. instead. I actually never really lowered my rates that low. I couldn't afford Could. to. Like in Massachusetts, like my husband at that point, we still needed me to bring in something to pay our bills in order to pay our mortgage to get by. Um, so there's no way I could go lower than $30 an hour. What I did was, this was a little thing in the beginning. Um, I did 30 for 30. So I did 30 day trial run $30 an hour for 30 days. And then at the it. end of 30 days, we would talk if they wanted to continue, I upped it to $40 an hour. And then I quickly stopped even charging hourly. I mean, that was probably like three months max before I realized like I cannot sustain an EA lifestyle. Like, I mean, maybe if you're doing website building or social media or something like project-based where like the hours are important like that, I couldn't do that because an EA is like two minutes here, three minutes there, five minutes there, maybe half an hour booking a whole trip, but you're really not spending hours and hours on something. So I changed, but I could never go to 15. Like I remember just no, people being like, I'm going to start at 15 it. and then I'm going to raise my rates. And I was like, I can't. And like, I had, I had people coming back to me saying, why would I hire you at $30 an hour when I can hire this person who's also American at $15 an hour? I said, okay. <laughs> like I didn't argue. I was like, just know that I'm no. super professional. I have a good track record. I have good experience, but if you really want to go with this $15 an hour person, I can't argue with that. Go ahead. I'm the same way. And I'm not going to compete on that low price. Yeah. You, you know what I always said Do you, you know, you get what you pay for. Yeah. I agree. Because when, some, when, when you're charging 30 an hour and you know, that's what you need to live on. And somebody else is charging 15 an hour. They're not at the professional level you are, or they'd be charging 30 an hour because mm -hmm. nobody charges 15 an hour just because they're feeling generous. Mm. It's because they're not at the professional level that you're at. And that's actually we also one of like the, the confidence level, like, right. Like, yeah. oh, well, I need clients. And so I'll start at this right. rate, even if they have the experience that kills me. I, I just it really, at it ABA, we like released an industry guide of pricing. And we said the minimum was $25 an hour for a general VA. Cause we're trying to like uplift the VA industry and be like, this is what you should be paying American VAs. But I mean, totally it's not like we can control our general, general admin. General totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And by the way, I also uh, promote don't compete on low price. Feel free to compete on high price. I like to look at what the what the what the highest price is that the market will bear for an area I specialize in, like for you, for EA. What's the highest price the market will bear? Am I really good? Yes. Then I'm going to either be at that high price or five or $10 higher than mm. that. That is that I find really works because then those people who are going to really value you because you're really good at what you do, they're going to be attracted to you because they want the best. Um, my business coach put this great. Like I was already charging pretty high and I wanted to charge higher. I wanted to increase my salary. And he said, what's your favorite meal? I was like, what? He's like, what's your favorite meal? And I was like, uh, you know, like spaghetti carbonara, probably. I love that. And he was like, all right, we want you to be a spaghetti carbonara in New York city, not a spaghetti carbonara in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. He was like, cause you can get a spaghetti carbonara in West Virginia for like eight bucks a plate, but you can get a spaghetti carbonara in New York city for 55 bucks a plate. That's what we want to make you into. And I was like, Ooh, exactly. got it. Yes. That is what I want to be. I want to be the New York city yeah. spaghetti carbonara. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And when you have that confidence and that attitude, you're going to get it um, because, and, and I had, thank God I had a coach in the beginning too, who said basically the same thing. Do you want the nickel and dimers who are going to try to talk you down on your price? Or do you want those people who are like, I want to work with the best. You're the best. You're 
you know, and they lit, I literally would ask them, why did you hire me? And they're like, well, you're the most expensive. So I assumed you were the best. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you're right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that psychological factor there. <laughs> it really worked. It okay. really, really worked. So um, in this industry, you and I were talking about that a lot of people don't really understand what an EA, an executive assistant working as a virtual assistant can earn. And you said you would be willing to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I would really appreciate it if you would share some specifics. Yes, I'd love to. So we kind of mentioned I was doing hourly in the beginning because that's what I read you do. And so that like, again, no role models, nothing. So just going in there blind being like, this is what I do. And um, I think the most they made a month was like $600 a month on a trial run. And I know some VAs out there are probably like, woo, that's great. Um, but I was <laughs> like, that's always going to be changing. It's going to be vacillated. It's going to go up and down at 600 bucks. Like, I mean, maybe I'll make a thousand one month. Maybe I'll make 400 one month. I hated that. I hated the thought. Again, that insecurity of like not knowing what I'm going to make. I just hated that. And I was like, how do I get around this? And then I started realizing when people were talking to me, especially for an executive assistant. So when you're in a corporate role in an office as an EA supporting C-level folks, you're at your desk, you're waiting for something that they're going to tell you, or you're like strategizing with them and they get into their head that you need to be there eight hours a day, right? You need to be on your email. You need to be responding because that is professional and that's what it looks like. And I kind of had this eureka moment where I was like, okay, so what they really want is these like tiers, lo tiered levels almost. Do they want someone who's going to respond right away? Do they care if I respond tomorrow? Or are they someone who like, is like, you can respond in two or three days or like, and then on top of that, do they want someone who's going to be like 10 minutes before the meeting starts? If the other admin emails you and says, oh my gosh, we have to reschedule. So-and-so's meeting is going over. Can you help? Do they want someone on the ball for that? Or do they not care? Right. They'll handle it themselves and they'll figure it out. And then we've got travel. Okay. So they want someone who books travel. Do they want someone who at seven o'clock at night, they're like, I'm not going to catch this flight. And they're on West Coast. I'm on East Coast. So they're like three hours behind. Like, can you change it to the next flight? Because I need to rush to the airport. Or are they going to handle it themselves when they get to the airport? Like what? There's all these different factors. And I realized, okay, what I can do is tier this and basically be like my highest price point is like, you're going to get a corporate level EA who is supporting you. I've got my email, my phone. You can text me. You can call me. I will help you with travel, last minute travel rearrangements if you need it. Then I would have this. So basically I framed that as like a 24 hour, 24 business hour turnaround time. So like I, I always in prospect calls, so like I'm in your email pretty much all the time, but that's in there to protect me. If I have calls going on, cause I have other clients. If I need to go pick up my daughter for something, I've got the 24 business hour turnaround time. And then I have clients like who want 48 business hour turnaround time. And then I've got five day turnaround times. And those are more like EA combined with, I would say general VA or like project management VA. That's like not really, I don't offer tons of that. So um, basically my pricing started off lower than this, but now what I offer is like for um, the five day turnaround time, the lowest is $1,500 a month. And I always get approached with, but how many hours? How many hours? Yes. Always. I hear that and a lot too. How many hours? How many hours? And I say, I'm sorry, I don't charge by hour because I say the same thing I just said. I can spend three minutes on answering an email and then four hours waiting for a response, right? And I cannot right. move forward with my project or my scheduling or whatever I'm doing until I get that response yeah. from all these other people. So do you want me to charge you for those four hours? Because that's like my time that I'm waiting and I can't move forward. And it's just like this whole thing where they're like, oh yeah, okay, good point. So I say, this is how I do it. 24 hour business, like, business hour turnaround time and you get the highest level, the highest tier or $1,500 a month, which is like the lowest tier. So anywhere, basically I do a personalized quote, but 1500 is the lowest I'll work for now. And then I'll have clients at like 3000 or more. If they want someone who's like on the email, who is able to like, you know, change their flight last minute or whatever. And like, I did have this once where a flight was delayed. This was just two weeks ago. My client called me freaking out and I said, I'm sorry, you're not on that level where I can help you with this. Cause I'm in the middle of doing something else. And he was like, what? Cause it'd been like you know a year and a half since people have been traveling. And I was like, 
yeah, I can't really help you with this right now. I'm sorry, but I, I can help you in about an hour and a half. And that's not, that's not helpful. <laughs> um, Good so for that, you holding that boundary. Good for you holding that boundary. You know, that nice is to really upsell great. too, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, so did he go up to the higher level? Basically what I charge, um, but I can go over $3,000 a month if they have multiple people on their, in their company that they want to me to help with. I, that's just $3,000 a month for one person. And that's the mm-hmm. whole shebang. That's like, I am looking at your email all the time. And you could say like, well, where's the freedom and flexibility in that? But you'd be surprised. Like it's not often these people need something last minute. I'm going to be honest. No. Like, and, and if they do, I generally can pick that up on a prospect call. And I'm like, I'm not going to work with this person because I can no right. longer support that. Nor do I want to be with a crazy person like that, you know? Right. So right. I feel them out really strongly on the phone first. And then mm-hmm. most of those people that are on that level, like they travel every week and they have probably like they, you know, I might get like 10, 20 emails a day from them where I need to do something. But most of the time that stuff can be done within that day, within the next day. It's not like super urgent. So that's, yeah, that's what I price. I love and it. That's how I, and that's how I do it. And I think like a lot of, if you're an EA, if you're listening to this and you're a corporate EA and you want to go into an EA VA role, don't charge per hour. Don't do out. Don't say how many hours are in a package. Say how soon you're going to, you're going to get back to requests from them or from their clients. Mm-hmm. And then how much mm-hmm. of your own time are you willing to put in after hours for travel? If they're a big traveler. And that's basically mm-hmm. what, what it all comes down to and how I'm able to charge so high. Yeah. Um, I just had somebody the other day, uh, who I was sharing, by the way, I have, um, an EA type person that works with me. I don't travel at all. And if I do, I do my own travel arrangements. I'm not a, I'm not a big traveler. I do my own travel arrangements. She doesn't have to do any of that. Um, and I can handle my own last minute stuff. So I'm at that bottom level that you're doing. I don't have any idea how many hours she works. I've never asked her. Mm. she gets the work done that needs to be done. That's all I care about. And I call that value-based pricing. I like that. So mm -hmm, because is it worth $1,500 to me to have that? Yes, absolutely. Because guess what? It saves me a minimum of 10 hours a week, Mm. a week. That's 40 hours a month that I can be spending growing my business. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a no brainer. Yeah. But you'd be surprised. Um, Like I still have clients coming to me who are like, what? I don't want to pay that. Like I can find a VA is 40 bucks an hour or whatever. And I'm like, okay, good luck. I'm not going to argue. Good luck getting the work done in the way you really want it done. (laughs) I think one of the main, what's a better word for selling point or like one of the main reasons I can differentiate or whatever. It's just like, I, I say like, you know, I have that corporate experience. I've been working for C-levels for a long time in person, in an office. My writing is impeccable. My organization skills are impeccable. I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have all those skill sets and I had that in-person experience. So that's, that's kind of how I'm able to like get an edge up is like, I didn't decide I wanted to go into this randomly. This is what I've been doing for now right. over 15 years, which is scary, but yes, that's, you know, I think one of those selling points. I have absolutely. And, you know, there's all kinds of different selling points. Like for example, even if you hadn't done this in the corporate world, but you've been doing it now for the number of years you have for C-levels, now you've got that experience. Mm -hmm. And um, so congratulations, Kiri, on all of that. That's so exciting. And it sounds like you're also much more at the pretty consistent monthly income because when you charge based on value yes. rather than hours, it doesn't vary. It's the right. same month to month. Right. So it, it is if I never took time off, but I do believe in actually, I do not, I have some vacation days in my contract, like the standard, like July 4th, you know, Christmas, whatever, but I don't charge for when I'm not there because I'm needed pretty much 24. For not 24 seven, but you know, like I'm needed every day. If I'm not there, they have to do it themselves. Um, I have mm-hmm. offered backup support, like on maternity leave and stuff, but for a week clients usually don't want someone else coming in and touching their stuff. So I, I will actually not charge at all 
when I go on vacation. So I don't get completely a steady paycheck because one of the great things about this is like, I don't have limited vacation. I don't have two weeks, three weeks. I calculated last year, it took six weeks, seven weeks off during the whole entire year and sometimes two weeks at a time. So I don't charge for that. So I don't get my steady paycheck, but I'm totally okay with that because I'm still making enough that with like vacations, I'm still hitting what I want to be hitting every year. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. I just want to share with you uh, my view on that. And, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a corporate executive. I am an entrepreneur, but I am the C-level in my company. And I do want somebody there all the time. Mm. So my, uh, my EA type assistant, she has trained um, a couple of uh, what we call subcontractors in the v- VA industry. She has them trained and they fill in. So she now takes off every Friday and she right now is off. And I think she's off a total of at least a month, maybe two months because she's had a knee replacement. Ooh. Yeah. And I don't want to ever have to get in my email. I don't ever want to have to do my calendar um, unless it's an emergency. Uh, so she does have replacements and it's worked great for me. So she charges me the exact same thing all the time. And then she pays the subcontractor. So it's essentially what you're talking about. It's just, you know, working with somebody like me, you know, you can just ask your clients, which do you prefer? Yeah. Do you want somebody to fill in or do you not? Right. I do. I, I, in the past, actually, I, it was quite good. I quite after maternity leave, I had quite a few clients take me up on it, but then those clients I'm no longer working with. And so when I leave, I'm like, Hey, do you want me to train someone and do it. And they're like, it's just a week. No God. And I'm like, okay, you really don't want anyone touching your stuff for even a week. (laughs) Um, so I, all right. I, and this past April, actually, my husband and I went away to South Carolina for the whole month. And I, I cut down my client workload and I hired people who would be replacements for some of them who wanted them. Some of them said no. And they were like, I'll do my stuff for a month. I'm like, okay, fine. But that actually ended up working out nice because it was a little bit like a maternity leave in the sense that now these clients know that person. And I just went away on vacation and the client was like, hey, can I have that person back again? Absolutely. So again, it's like, I did offer that, but there are just some clients who are like, I'd rather take the price reduction or I'd rather just not have someone touching my inbox and my calendar for one week. That's not enough. Because I think a lot of an EA is built on relationships as well. Like you get to know your clients so well that you become the right hand. And it's hard to explain that to people. They're like, it's just calendar management and travel and like a few, maybe like data entry or whatever. It's like, no, because you develop this relationship that even when you're virtual, you can do that is just so close. And like, I was just talking to a client yesterday. He was like, I need you to tell me to stop like overselling myself or like basically offering things for free. And I'm like, yeah, why do you do that? You know, like, and I'm able to say to him, like, (laughs) so clear, like, why do you do that? Like, you're, you're, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot because now you're gonna have to do this other event for free because you offered it because you felt bad. And then it's like, you know, you get to this point where you can strategize with them and treat them like a really close relationship. And I think that's why some of them are like, I don't want the stranger in my inbox for just a week or just my sure, absolutely travel. No way. So yeah, I think you're a little different in that. And and maybe it's the money. I am. And I think a big part of it is because I train VAs. Right. And I've trained everybody, even the subcontractors have gone through my program. So I already know them. So you're probably right. That's probably a part, a big part. Yeah. And and I think the entrepreneur mindset is different because then you know what it's like to hire other people and understand that. Whereas these people are in companies with employees that they used to see every day. And so it's like harder for them to get to be like, okay, and this person was totally coming for a week. No. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> In fact, I just uh, had a CEO of a company have his assistant contact me about potentially hiring somebody like that to do all of that for him that you're talking about. And she said, you know, well, I haven't talked him into it. He's going to do it himself. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's He'll the employee back. mindset. <laughs> I feel sorry for him yeah. because I, I did mine way too long myself. So um, I thank you so much for sharing that pricing and structure that you have. I really appreciate it because as you, you and I were talking before, m- many people simply do not understand how much money you can really make as a virtual mm. assistant. And it's, and I have said this, it's hard going from EA corporate to EA VA and making the same amount of money because you get stuck on the hourly or you don't know how to charge. And then you're like, but I only spent two minutes on this email. 
where am I going to get my money from? So I do try to help other people who want to leave the corporate and be like, you can do this and you can schedule right. those emails to go out. And like, you can go out during lunch break and handle stuff and, you know, make sure you stick to your contract. Like any VA, like exactly. if you start giving them Set like turnaround time, that's too fast. If you're like, you know, responding in three minutes and they're going to expect that and you should be at your full-time mm-hmm. job. So don't do that. Make sure you're mm-hmm. setting expectations early. Yeah. I call it teach your clients how to treat you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, we all make a mistake in the beginning. I've made mistakes. I've been too on top. Oh my God. I made every do. mistake under the sun. That's Mm -hmm. why I think I'm such a good teacher because I've already made every mistake. I already know all the mistakes. I help you not make those mistakes because, well, you know, you experienced it. You you don't even know what you don't know until you do this. Yeah. I've learned so much. I mean, like there's stuff in my contract that I never thought I would put in my contract, but because a client, you know, like burned me, it's like, okay, now I have to have this in my contract. I didn't clarify that one little thing. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. So can you talk, we're, we're wrapping up here. Um, as always, I could talk to you all day long. You're, I love everything I I, about you, Carrie. You're I love that. I love talking to you too. <laughs> <laughs> so I know there are people right now who are like, oh my gosh, I wonder if she has any client openings because I would love to work with her. Um, can you talk a little bit about your new um, program source your systems and how people can get in touch with you if they want to talk with you about how you might help them. Yes. So these are like almost like two separate things. So if you, I have an email list on my site, dependableva.com where when I get clients that are either my roster is full, which it is, or like they're just not a match. Like they're looking for a general VA or social media VA or whatever. And they just heard through the grapevine about me. I will take down all that information and I will send out an email to my email list saying like, I, and I do not spam people. I do not say like, there's nothing on this email list, except this is a new client that could be for you. Um, so if you want to sign up, that is on my website and I do charge a referral fee from the VA. It's minimal but it's 50% refund if within the first three months, it doesn't work out for whatever reason. So you have to know that. I want to put that disclaimer out there. I don't charge the client, I charge the VA. But I, I get, I mean, like I sent out three emails this month already. Clients come to me, I get, I get them in waves. I'll go like four months with no one reaching out and then like seven reach outs or something in one month. So it, it will be helpful if you're looking for a client um, to sign up for that list. My new business, Source Your Systems, is like one foot in the VA field. Um, it's kind of interesting. So I was having clients come to me who were like, Hey, I need a VA. I need to organize this. I need to like find a platform or a system that does this. And I need you to control this. And after a while I started realizing you don't really need a VA. What you need is just to organize the back end of your business, your operations and your administration part, and be able to not send clients, you know, invoices that are like PDFs or like, you want to actually have something set up. Or maybe you need Dubsado, or maybe you need QuickBooks, or maybe, you know, and I would help research all these platforms and then kind of implement them. So what I'm doing is taking this to the next level. So what I'm going to be is primarily a managerial role. So there's like, again, three tiers. I love my tiers. And the first one. Threes are marketing gold. I'm going to tell you right there. Threes are marketing gold. I think it is. I mean, you see it like Dropbox, like all these like the three tiers of different kinds of pricing. (laughs) So like the first tier is like, they would be working primarily with me. We'd have like an in-depth consultation. And then I would be working with the client and creating a deck for them on recommendations based on what they need. Like maybe they need Zapier to like talk to things, maybe, you know, et cetera. And that's like a very like bootstrapping version. Now where I need more help and where I need VAs and like people who are into tech and automations and all that kind of stuff is the next tier is the client. If the they want to go one step forward, they're going to want to see a demo. So I am saying you can see up to three demos and I'm hoping to have, you know, like different VAs who can do different things. So they might say, okay, I want to see a demo on QuickBooks. I want to see a demo on Dubsado. And I want to see a demo on Constant Contact. Let's just say out of the blue. And then I'd have these experts, experts under me, which I need to hire and they'll have a Calendly link and they'll be able to, you know, do this demo for them. And I will make sure talking to client, what specifically do you want to see? I'll ask the VA or the tech expert, what do you want me to ask them to make sure? And then I send them this like pre-briefing 
you know, documentation. Then they can also sign up, sign up for like light implementation. By that, I mean like the VA or whoever will get on the phone with them and say like, okay, here's the code that I need. All right, I'll set this up. And now they're not setting it up, like really setting up. They're just logging them in and saying, look, this is where you go to find what you need. Done. The final tier is complete implementation. So you would have gone through all that you would have included the first the deck, you would have gotten the demos, and then you get the complete implementation. And that's the most expensive tier. And I would need VAs who know these systems inside out. And they're sitting with the client and they're getting all the information, like something like the Bosado that's going to take a, like a long time. So I have to be on the client, making sure they get all their stuff to the VA on time. The VA needs to have that stuff by a certain date. And then maybe they set it up over two or three days and they work with the client and then they sit down and say, here's the final demo where you're going to see where everything is that you need to do. And like something like QuickBooks too, that's going to be really extensive implementation setup. So I'm moving into more of like a managerial role, not working with clients as much. It's a little different because it's not retainer. It's not like long-term relationship. It's like, here's what I can do. This is here it is. And then we're going to say goodbye. And they get like it's for project, 90 days. It's project based. Yes. And for 90 days, the client gets like a portal that they can log into and they see their demo, their deck. They see like like what they need to upload in order to, you know, get the implementation going. And so, um, yeah, that's basically what it is. I'm really excited. The website is done and I now need to hire and network VAs who are experts. So if you guys are experts and you know one system back to front, and usually I need someone who needs like knows extensive, an extensive system like QuickBooks or because like it's easy enough to find people who know MailChimp or something like that. But that is then please sign up. And I and I really want to make this a community where it's I can reach out to them too and say, I have a client looking for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What do you guys suggest? And then have these experts, because I know this stuff, but there are people who know it way more than me, which is why I'm going to be moving into more of a manager role. And interestingly, we didn't go into this at all, but I did at one point have a VA agency under Dependable VA, and I did not like it because I did not like managing long-term relationships. And I, and I was like, I want to work with the client. And I just realized it wasn't for me. But what I like about my new business is that it's very much like I said, it's not long-term. It's like, I'm managing these VAs. It's like all going to be automated on my end. Cause why would I offer this business if it's not automated on my end? <laughs> and then like, you know, it's very <laughs> like the client just goes into a site. They pick which VA they want to get the demo from. They set up the Calendly. They like do all that. And I just kind of see it all. And I'm, my goal is to hire an OBM to actually manage all the VAs and the, the clients and stuff like that. So that I can just take a step back. So that, that's my new business. So I love, I love number one, the name Sorcerer Systems. Mm-hmm. I love the whole concept because me as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I can't even tell you how much time I just spent and how much time my team spent trying to figure out what affiliate software program to use <laughs> and then getting it all set up. If I could have just come to you and said, here's everything I want. Here's what I need it to work with. Tell me what to do. Uh, tell me what your recommendation is and implement it in 90 days. Oh my God, I would have saved time, money, and agony. You know, my goal is actually like, this is not something I would offer in the beginning because I need to like figure out the kinks, but my goal is to get this whole process done in three weeks. Like, so oh from start, God. like research from a deck to like that would implementation be so if amazing. wanted to do it. But I need a lot of people on my team in order to have like, yeah. we need to make sure someone's free right. to do it within three weeks and stuff like that. So it's like, but you know, what's interesting is like, we were talking about the security of like knowing how to do it before. And one of my favorite things that I remember other VAs like questioning me on was I just was like, I'm going to figure it out as I go. And that was like my whole VA mentality. Like if a client asked me to do something, and I had no idea how to do that. I was like, I'm just going to figure it out. And I'm not going to tell them. I'm just going right. to figure it out. Exactly. I don't want to say I'm that insecure with this business, but like, there, I know there's going to be points that I'm going to be like, ah, <laughs> how do I do this? <laughs> oh no, I don't have an, an expert in X. I need to scramble and find someone, you know? So it's kind of like, but that doesn't scare me anymore. Cause I'm like, I've done this before where I can figure it out as I go and I'm going to. So right now I'm working on my network, getting VAs who are interested or even any kind of tech expert, automation expert, and like trying to connect with people who have similar businesses to see if fake turnover people to me that they might not have anymore or need any, I mean, cause they usually coach, so they might not, you know, need them anymore. So it's, it's been fun. It's been a ride. So I'm hoping that it will be completely launched by September. 
so soon. September 2021. So if you're listening yeah. to this after September 2021 and you want to hire Kiri's company, Source Your Systems, to actually set up your, you know, any of the three levels, find the system you need, mm-hmm. um, whatever the... <laughs> Uh, get get recommendations on the system. Actually, find the system you need and get mm-hmm. demos, or implement the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Contact uh, Kiri and Kiri. I know dependableva.com is one. Mm-hmm. What's source your systems? What's source your systems.com. Source your systems. Yep. There you go. <laughs> source systems.com. Yeah. Kiri, thank you so much. I knew this was going to be a wonderful whirlwind. You shared so many valuable tips and tools. Thank you so much. Well, I hope your listeners and your audience get something out of this. And again, if you want to connect with me on social media, I'm pretty much Instagram is virtually Kiri. And I think Twitter is Dependable VA and um, LinkedIn, Kiri Mohan. I am there. Yeah. And we will put all of these links in the show notes um, in case you don't know how to spell some of it or anything like that. Source Your Systems is not really possible to misspell. I know. Kiri is K-I-R-I. I spent a long time trying to figure out that name because I picked a dependable VA out of the blue. It was like the only thing available on GoDaddy. I was like searching all these VA names and everything was taken. And then I was like, oh, dependable VA is free. Cool. And I just like took it. And yeah, I, that's, and that's not that I regret URL. it, but like it was, I, oh I wish I'd picked something else um, because it's good. It's short and uh, well, it's kind of like a tongue, like dependable, like, it, blah, 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 blah. and people don't always know how to spell that word. I've realized. Um, so, mm, so it was like, I was like, with, with source your systems, which I've been calling it's like sis. an easy one to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> source your systems. I was like, I need to find a good name. And so I'm really happy. You did that. it. Thank you. I'm impressed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to dare to leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.